We had a really stormy and really humid day today, so my hair looks like shit. I swear, my hair is going to be like the new running meme of this Yu-Gi-Oh! channel. In fact, it may not even be a Yu-Gi-Oh! channel anymore by the time I'm done. You'll just be watching Yu-Gi-Oh! related videos with a guy that has amazingly bad hair days. Enjoy. This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, and so if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for your own matches, your own tournaments, your own duels, your own purposes, your own needs, then definitely check out their site and see what they have to offer you. I'm a big fan of how they do business, and their pricing and shipping from what I've seen and experienced thus far are both top notch. So definitely check out their site, which is linked in the description, and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh card review slash discussion, but this time it is going to be on a batch, because Konami of the European area, still the TCG, decided to spoil to us the entire new set of four cards for the first TCG exclusive archetype that is coming to us in Code of the Duelist. There are two TCG exclusive archetypes, we get two every year, and from previous years past, usually we got five cards from each time, but now as of recently they're only giving us four. So, I mean, sucks to suck, but still, the first set of cards that they gave us is from the F.A. archetype in Code of the Duelist. Now, I don't know what F.A. stands for. It could be Future Athlete. It could be Fast Athlete. I don't know. All I know is that it's a Speed Racer theme. I don't know if a name has been confirmed for what F.A. stands for, kind of like how U.A. was Ultra Athlete. But, in my mind, the F.A. here stands for fucking awful, because... Oh baby, we're going into Link format, the Link era of Yu-Gi-Oh, so what is like the most amazing thing Konami could give us for a TCG exclusive archetype to help push Links out of the gate, you know? A new TCG exclusive Link deck? That'd be pretty fucking fun, but nah, instead we have this weird level modulation deck that's somehow some weird combination of like Fortune Ladies and Mecha Phantom Beasts, yet both of those decks didn't work, so what makes you think this one will in the year of 2017? Oh god, I'm a little bit heated at how, um, how unnecessarily, like, irrelevant this archetype is. The artwork is pretty legit on these cards, but I digress. We're gonna talk about all four of them as a batch, because, I mean, shit, there's not really anything worth talking about them in an individual basis, because the entire archetype, unless they get literally the most broken cards next set, for them are going to be probably not worth. It's just probably going to be another sub terrors. But anyway, the first monster of the new set is FA Sonic Meister. It is a level 4 wind machine type effect monster with 0 attack and 1000 defense. And its effect is gains attack equal to its level times 300. Cannot be destroyed by battle with an opponent's monster whose original level slash rank is lower than this card's level. So they have a kind of Cleaford esque effect of protection and sort of stuff like that. Each time an FA spell or trap card or effect is activated, you can increase this card's level by 1. If this card is level 7 or higher, it can make up to 2 attacks on monsters during each battle phase. So you summon it as a level 4, it can gain levels via its own effect. To make itself go up in attack value, it'll start at 1200 attack because it's a naturally a level 4, but its base attack is 0. And then if you activate any FA spells or traps, it will go up in a level, going up to level 5, 6, 7, etc. on its own. And then if the FA spells or traps give it any level boost by itself with the uh, with the FA's um, with the FA spells and traps uh, assistance of putting its level up higher, it will gain more attack and it will then gain its extra effect if it is level 7 or higher. So these cards literally gain effects if they are level 7 or higher and at no other time. Why though? Anyway, next card is FA Hang On Mach, and it is another level 4 wind machine type effect monster with 0 attack and 1800 defense. I'm noticing a trend. Gains attack equal to its level times 300. Uh huh, uh huh, trendy, trendy. Unaffected by the activated effects from an opponent's monster whose original level or rank is lower than this card's level. Uh huh, uh huh, ah! Uh -huh. Ah! Trendy! But each time an FA spell or trap card or effect is activated, you can increase the card's level by one! Oh my god! It's like every single one of these cards is going to have this effect, but that still doesn't make it good. If you wanted to make a level modulation archetype good, you should have given Mega Phantom Beats more like support, because at least that has 
a good like slew of cards already accessible to it. But anyway, if this card's level is level 7 or higher, any card sent to your opponent's graveyard is banished instead. So that's interesting. The way they word this, any card sent to your opponent's graveyard is banished instead. So if you use this to kill, one, it puts your opponent under a macrocosmos if it's a level 7 or higher. That's actually pretty alright because it'll be big as shit. It'll be 2100 attack or higher when it gets up to level 7 or higher for this effect to be active. That puts it into Dark Law territory if it just goes up one more level. Uh, so, I mean, that's kind of decent because, you know, banishing cards as a macrocosmos is kind of legit, and then this thing can destroy things in battle and banish them as well. But so those two monsters were rather lackluster. The one that banishes is kind of alright, but at the same time, these cards are basically fortune ladies, and those cards don't historically really work that well in 2017. But anyway, we have a pair of spells that came out with this as well, and one is a field spell card called FA Circuit Grand Prix. It is a field spell card, as I've already said, and it says increase the levels of all FA monsters on the field by two during the battle phase only. Once per turn, when your FA monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can draw one card. If this face-up card on the field is destroyed by a card effect, you can add one FA card from your deck to your hand, except for FA Circuit Grand Prix. You can only activate this effect of FA Circuit Grand Prix once per turn, so the search effect is only a once per turn effect, which rightfully so, that seems pretty alright. But it's got a static continuous effect of increase the levels of all FA monsters on the field by two during the battle phase only. That's pretty cool. That makes it easier for you to get your FA monsters to the level seven or higher they require to be at to get their good effects. And also, this happens to be an FA spell, meaning if you normal summon either Hang on Mach or, uh, or Speed Meister, whatever the hell its original name is, Sonic Meister, if you summon either one of those cards, then activate this card in your field spell zone, that is one FA spell or trap being activated, they will both boost themselves up to level 5, and then this card during the battle phase will make them level 7. So, that means that it's already got a certain bit of cohesion in terms of it can utilize itself well enough to make these cards get their effects quickly and easily. Now. It gives you some sort of extra benefit. It turns all of your monsters into Air Knight Parshats, giving them extra, you know, sort of effects to allow you to draw cards. Every single one of your monsters that kills one of your opponent's monsters will allow you to draw a card, but you only get the draw once per turn, which is kind of irritating. I kind of wish that advantage would have, like, snowballed, because this is right now just a normal summon deck. There's nothing else that we have that allows you to bypass your normal summon, so you are normal summoning one monster per turn. And, I mean, that's that's something that's going to have to be addressed and uh, and dealt with if this deck is going to be anywhere near playable, because at least Subterrors had that. At least Subterrors could bypass the normal summon by being able to special summon your dudes from hand, but as of right now, this looks like it's going to be the flop of the TCG archetypes um, comparative to, to its... Uh, to its predecessors like BA, Cosmo, Kaijus, stuff like that. And even Spirals now. Spirals are actually pretty good with that Link monster now. So they they have risen up in the ranks to a good TCG arc type as well. So now it's literally just Noble Knights, Sub Terrors, and this that are probably just the bad ones. <laughs> oh no. But anyway, the last card spoiled is FA Downforce. It is a quick play spell card. It says target one FA monster you control, increase its level by two until the end of this turn. During your main phase, except the turn this card is sent to the graveyard, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one FA monster you control, increase its level by two until the end of this turn. You can only use each effect of FA downforce once per turn. Now this is a very interesting card as well, but I still don't think it makes this theme good because it's just a weird attack and level modulation theme that came out of literally nowhere. It's literally just a new upgraded version of like Fortune Ladies and Mecha Phantom Beasts, but neither of those themes were decently good enough to compete in this metagame either, so why would another attack and level modulation theme be good either? But, FA Downforce is a very interesting card, as well as the field spell, because of how the monsters are worded. The monster's level gaining effect is worded as each time an FA spell or trap card or effect is activated, you can increase this card's level by one. It's you can increase the level by one. So it will give you an option to increase the level by one, and it also triggers every time an FA card is activated, or when an effect is activated. And that's where the field spell allowing you to draw cards is pretty cool, because that is an effect that will trigger. 
and that is an effect that will activate and that is an effect that should allow you to gain levels on your monsters. The same thing with Downforce. Downforce is another card like the Field Spell that straight out of the gate lets you get your monsters to level 7 very quickly because you can normal summon the uh, the Meister or the Hang On Mach and then you can activate Downforce. That is a card that was activated so they can boost their level by 1 naturally and then Downforce will allow it to gain the additional 2 levels via its own effect applying to the monster and then you have a monster that has a decent enough situation going for it. This is also something you can use in the battle phase alongside the field spell to get your monsters up even higher in level stats. Unfortunately, the level gain only lasts until the end of the turn. Kind of would have liked it to have been permanent. But regardless, the fact that this card has a graveyard effect that can be activated as well is fantastic in terms of design because the card monsters effects, the monster cards effects are worded when an FA spell or trap card or effect is activated. So with cards like Downforce, if it uses its effect from the graveyard, that is an effect activating of an FA spell or trap card, meaning the monsters will already naturally try to boost themselves by one level, and then Downforce will apply to the monster, giving it the additional two levels from its graveyard effect. So, Downforce literally does the exact same thing in the graveyard as it does on the field, and that's a really cool little application that they gave this card. But, as of right now, the theme name FA still literally stands for fucking awful, because as I've said multiple times during this video, this is a basic bitch attack and level modulation archetype being introduced to us on the cusp of Link format when they could have given us a Link deck exclusive archetype to really push us into the forefront of the new mechanic, but instead we're getting this updated Fortune Lady archetype based on Speed Racer. What? <laughs> Why? Why are we getting this? We're getting this? And I would kind of be okay with it if the other TCG exclusive archetype was going to be something like a link based archetype as well. But no, it's a ritual archetype. It's a zombie ritual archetype from the looks of it with the few cards that we've seen and know of that are going to be coming out. So we have no TCG exclusive link deck which would have been an amazing, amazing way for Konami to push the new mechanic to us in the TCG. Especially since if you look in the OCG there has not been a tier 1 link deck yet. Whereas we could have had something like that to really let us just absolutely develop in our minds and like just allow us to develop the game the way that like we could as CCG players like we did when Burning Abyss was our own deck and when Cosmo was our own deck. We could have taken charge of this with our own Link deck. It could have been great. Could have been broken. But nah. Mm -mm. We have this deck. The FA deck. I, I, I'll again, I don't know what FA stands for. It could be Future Athlete. It could be Fast Athlete. All these cards look very futuristic. That's the only reason why I say Future. Um, but, like, <sighs> fucking awful is the only thing that comes to my mind. Because these four cards don't really take the cake in any way, shape, or form. They all are very well designed and designed to work very, like, very well together. I give them that. There's If there's anything that this archetype has... It's good design going into it because all of the spells and traps that we have, the two that we have, both have effects that get your monsters to the appropriate level 7 or higher very quickly. That's good. The two monsters, they both, well, not both. The macro one is pretty good. Hang on, Mach is, that's pretty alright because macro cosmos like effects are always very well appreciated at differing points of the metagame because they're usually pretty relevant. But the attacking twice, uh -huh. I don't know. As of right now, the biggest issue I have is that the deck cannot bypass as normal summon with the cards that we have access to, meaning it's just a shitty normal summon deck that just tries to normal summon really, really basic level 4 beaters that become level 7 beaters, only get good effects once they hit level 7, and then they have to be like attacking for that to be applicable because of the field spell to give it another good effect just to allow you to draw one card uh, it just seems like there's such a huge amount that you're trying to do for not a lot of reward so I'm definitely curious to see what the rest of the support this could get in the next two or three sets could be we're gonna be getting three more support waves for this archetype 
the only question is, are they going to give it some cards that make it decent sooner rather than later, or not at all? I mean, I really hope we're not waiting until the last support wave before we get, like, the amazing cards that's like, oh, you could special summon another FA from hand, and all this sort of nonsense. I really hope that they don't make us wait that long to get the really good cards, but I digress. I, I don't think this archetype is going to do anything straight out of the gate, and unless it really really get some good support in the next three to four sets it is going to be destined to be another sub terror deck which is basically terrible so that is my opinion on the matter if you i really like these cards artwork i like their design i like their artwork but just from a logistics standpoint they're not up to snuff so anyway as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your opinions are in the comments down below as always links as always are in the description of my facebook and patreon pages if you really enjoy the content that i'm making and you want to help support the channel then definitely go check out the patreon and consider backing me over there you can get some certain rewards back from that and all that sort of nonsense and you'd have my eternal gratitude if that is something that you wanted to go check out and maybe consider contributing to it would help out a ton help some future projects come into fruition a bit easier and a bit faster and all that sort of jazz so definitely go check that out if you are interested in supporting the channel and if you really like the stuff that I'm doing, it would help out a ton, like I've already said. But anyway, as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time as usual, guys, and take care. I will see you in the next video. Let's hope that the other TCG exclusive archetype is a bit better than this one, because if we don't have a good TCG exclusive archetype for this next year cycle of the game, I think that there's not really a lot of fun things to look forward to when we just get to see everything four months in advance from the OCG. Am I alone in that? I don't know. I think I'm not alone in that feeling. But anyway, take care, guys.